folks. In this video, I'm going to show you how debouncing works in JavaScript. If you're not already familiar with the concept, I highly recommend reading my post on medium.com. I have pasted a link in the description section. Okay, let's get started. Before we dive into the concept of debouncing and I explain to you how this works, let's just understand what, what it is that we're trying to solve by debouncing. So the user does some expensive actions such as scrolling through your page real fast or you know uh, keys in a type of search etc and then there's an event handler for each of these kind of events and those event handlers get triggered for every single user action and sometimes it, it could be so bad that it would freeze the browser and this is what we could, we're trying to solve for example in case of uh, type ahead search we want to wait until the user has stop typing for a certain uh, set interval and that is when we want to fire the uh, actual event handler not for every keystroke that the user is typing so just to emulate the user action i have uh, a function called emulate user event all that it does is that in a set interval of 100 milliseconds it's going to call a uh, an equivalent of an event handler in this case it's a logger that just logs to the console the uh, uh, date and uh, just to make sure that it doesn't keep continuing infinitely uh, I have a set timeout and you know it clears the interval after about two seconds so going by this I would expect to see date being logged to the console 20 times because it's called every 100 milliseconds for 2000 milliseconds so let's just make sure that that's what's happening. I'm going to run it and just like we expected, it ran 20 times. So this is what we're trying to tackle right now. Let me go ahead and clear the console and comment the execution and we bring in debouncing. Debouncing is just a helper function that takes in a function callback and a wait time. And it returns another function, which is a closure. So what we're doing here is we have a variable called debounce logger, and we call debounce, and pass the logger function to it, which we declared right at the beginning, and 500 milliseconds as the wait time for it. And unlike last time in the emulate user event, where we pass the logger function directly, in this case we're passing the debounce logger which is the returned closure function from debounce. So let's execute this scenario and see what happens. Okay, after 2000 milliseconds passed, it printed just one time. So that is exactly what debounce is supposed to do. It's supposed to wait for a certain time until the user uh, has stopped interacting and the events have stopped triggering. And that is when it's going to finally call the callback for the callback or the event handler function. So the uh, the uh, the closure that was returned does exactly that. It has uh, it it has a set timeout uh, for the wait time that was given, and every single time that that the debounce function is invoked by the uh, by the event, in this case, you know, every hundred milliseconds, it keeps clearing the timeout. And setting it again so there's really nothing to execute the time even before the previous timeout completes executing it's being cleared and reset every single time until such time that it stops calling so the 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 call that was the most recently executed that is not going to be cleared anymore and that set timeout will run to completion and the callback will be called and in this case callback is called uh, it's called later and all that it's doing is it's calling the original function that was passed to it so this is kind of a ripoff from uh, uh, underscore JS but I've made it extremely simple just to explain the concept of debounce I've taken out all those fancy uh, edge cases and everything but that was it it's pretty simple uh, it's a small helper function thanks for watching Feel free to share, comment, or like, and don't forget to subscribe.